So running is a very risky sport when it comes to injuries. So I think I've heard something like 80% of runners will get injured uh, within their first year of running. And why is that? Well, you know, traumatic injuries where you you have a fall or you twist your ankle in a fall or something like that. Uh, that's only a small fraction of it. The majority of the injuries comes from too much, too soon, too frequently, too often, too fast, whatever. Too much, basically. Uh, because your body only has a finite ability to adapt to new stress. And so if you give it too much in any given day, week, month, year, it's going to have trouble adapting to that and, and you're going to be more injury prone. So when you're planning your session, when you're planning your week, when you're planning your training year, it's very important to pay attention to this gradual buildup principle. And that ability to adapt is a little bit different for everyone. It depends on a lot of factors like your previous fitness, your current fitness, as well as other life factors like work and family obligations and all these kind of things. They essentially, essentially training is the art of balancing stress with recovery. You apply a stress and then you recover from that stress. And now, if you apply too much stress, more stress than your ability to recover from, then you're risking um, overreaching, which can lead over time to overtraining, which is a systemic problem, or you might risk injury. Bone, tendon, muscle, especially these structural um, things in our legs are very prone to injury if we overdo it in any given amount of time. Essentially, there's two important factors. The first one is gradually increasing, which means if you increase something, say mileage, for example, say you're running, I don't know, we'll talk miles. Say you're running 20 miles per week right now, and you're comfortable with 20 miles a week, and you wanna go up to 25 miles a week. Well, okay, uh, you jump up to 25 miles perhaps uh, the next week, and here's the thing. Now your body needs time to adapt to the new mileage. So you don't want to do another jump in mileage the next week. You want to stay at that mileage for a little while, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe as much as four weeks. Maybe you have to go down a little bit in between there. You go up to the new mileage, you go a little bit down again, you go up, you stay there. And after a few weeks, your body is adapted to that new mileage. Cool. You're ready for a new increase in mileage. And that's how it goes. How much to increase each time depends on your fitness and your genetics and a lot of factors. We're not gonna go into those specifics today. We can do that in another video. Or you can, if you have a specific question, of course, you can send me a message at the, the, the Lone Trail Facebook page. If you're interested in coaching or advice or anything like that, just contact me there. But basically, gradual increase. That's what it's all about, okay? You wanna gradually increase over time. So. Getting up to a, like a high mileage program like I'm trying to do, it takes years. It takes years. However, if I only focused on building mileage, like I just said, and just kept doing that continually, I'll probably get up to pretty high mileage faster than what I am doing currently. But the reason I'm not doing that is because of principle number two. And that is, at any given time, you only increase one type of stress. And this is where most people go wrong, okay? Most people understand the gradual increase thing, but you gotta realize also that if you're working on mileage, for example, if you're working on increasing that mileage, your structural elements in your legs and, and your body, it's already dealing with a lot. It has enough to deal with already, just getting used to that new mileage. Now, if you at the same time, that same week as you just up the mileage to 25 miles, if you also add in, say, a speed workout, which you're not used to, you add in a, a, a session where you're running much faster than you normally do, well, now you added two stressors in one week. You've added more mileage and you've added more speed. And that is a recipe for disaster. That is basically how most people get injured. They do too many things at once. They do too much at once. So in any given period, however long you define that period, you want to focus on mostly one type of adaption at the time. Give your body the chance to adapt to something new without having to adapt to something else at the same time. And then typically these factors are mileage, speed, 
right? Like how fast you're actually running. Elevation, how much elevation are you covering in the, in the course of a week? And of course, frequency is another thing. If you're used to running every other day and now suddenly you're running every day, granted you're keeping the mileage the same, well, if you're keeping the mileage the same, you might be okay, right? Because you're increasing the frequency, but the amount of kilometers or miles you're running is the same. But if you're increasing, increasing the frequency from every other day to every day and not spreading the mileage out, then you're essentially doubling your mileage and your frequency. And on top of that, you'll add in a tempo run, fast paced run. And now you've increased your speed, your frequency, and your volume all at once in one week. And that will usually lead to an injury. You get what I'm saying? So the idea here is that not only do you wanna in make increases very gradually, but you wanna focus on one thing at a time. And when you're in the middle of a sort of adaption period, meaning that first and second week of adding in a new stress, you definitely don't wanna do anything else that's out of the ordinary. So the way to remember it is basically anything new Anything new in your training needs to be paid attention to and made sure that you're not doing two new things in any given week. Because of this, my training year isn't a constant increase in volume over the course of the year in order to get as fast as possible up to say 100 miles a week. I have periods of my year that I do mileage increases, base training, aerobic base building and then I'll do a build up to a half marathon or a marathon or something like that that I'm going to do next year and in those periods I'll keep the mileage the same so I'll reach a certain plateau in terms of my mileage then I'll stop increasing it I'll stay at that mileage for a while just to allow my body to sort of get very comfortable with that mileage then I'll start adding in the VO2 max sessions the interval training at the track have that for a while, maybe a month, right? Then I'll add in some tempo runs on top of that, etc. And that way I'll build myself up, up to a peak, I'll do a taper and bam, the race uh, is the final icing on the cake, so to speak. I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. And if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments or you can send me a message on Facebook at the Lone Trail Facebook page. And also head over to the Lone Trail Facebook page right now. There's a link in the description and click like on the page so you get updates whenever I post something on their Facebook page. And of course, subscribe to this channel as well. I really appreciate having you with me. I love talking about running, as you know. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.